We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Proper location on flags? I think so. Is that supposed to be on the flag? On the flag? That one's supposed to be on the flag. used to be right there. I don't know if it's here. I don't even know if it's here. I don't know which flag they Will they get the discussion? So we'll go with the first with the reading in a minute from the last meeting. Is there any additions, changes? We'll make a motion. Dave makes a motion. There. Is there a second? I'll second. Mike seconds. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. We have the presentation of the bills along with the presentation of payroll. Any questions? Otherwise, if I need to entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Mike moves to approve. Is there a second. Seconded by Nicole. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Motion carries. Start with city commissioner's report. Uh, Dave. Uh, I really have nothing other than uh, I'd like to thank Jim and his crew and the crew that you brought in. Uh, that's just what good. Thanks for cutting the trees down. So I think we uh, probably continue to do more. If yeah, it needs a lot of it. Yeah. I think they all look good. So thank you. Yep. Mike. Uh, the cemetery looks fine. I was out there and checked it today. So it looks good. Um, flowers are still alive. So I guess that's all I got. Okay. Paul? Uh, HEDC met and they have approved, uh, right now the Hillsborough Business Association does Hillsborough Christmas cash. And in the past, the uh, Business Association had uh, the, the people that took that program had to pay 5% when they took in to cover costs on that. Uh, the HEDC approved paying that 5% for the businesses. So that's gonna be a real win for the business association. So thank the HEDC for, for doing that. And that's of course the 10% that gets, the HEDC also does for the community, the residents that take out those loans. So that's a, that's a big win for the Hillsborough Business Association and the citizens of Hillsborough. On the beautification, I haven't met yet on that meeting yet. Electrical, I think we're we're going crazy on electrical. So hopefully we'll get to, we'll get more and more done on that. I noticed I signed a lot of checks for electrical, so hopefully, hopefully that's a good sign. Okay. Any questions, Nicole? Do you have anything? Um, just that. Um we had met uh, two separate meetings with AE2S and um, went over the water main replacement and sanitary force main improvements. Um, this was prior to my time, so I believe what we went over is kind of what the requirements are for surveying and applications and things that have to be submitted on time. Um, I don't know if I'm missing any more than that. This is probably prior to discu discussions prior to me coming in. Right. Um, I know Steve said that he was waiting at our last meeting for the project that uh, Jim had a couple things that he was before he'd have that request to us for the what it would cost for the storm sewer our storm drain replacement and repair project so he is working on that I call the ask they asked about uh, that I would be able oh, yeah. to sign. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So
So on the USDA grant and loan, we need to decide at what limit we would allow <coughs> Jim to sign off on change yeah. orders. Uh, normally they went to 10,000 is what they've done in the past. So. Can you hear? Can you hear me now? We can hear on when you go online too, it's so quiet. How much will allow Jim to sign off on change orders if there is any, which we shouldn't have too many of that we were thinking. So I just to entertain a motion or have a limit that you want set, but like I said, ten thousand is what they kind of be to us had recommended. So. I'll make a motion. Dave makes a motion for ten thousand for a limit for Jim to sign up to. Is there a second? I'll second. Mike seconds. Any other discussion on it? Paul? Yes. Mike? Yes. Dave? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Any yes for me? I think that was it on that one, correct? That's okay. Yep. Anything else, Nicole? I have nothing further than that. Okay. Um, the pool is up and running and hopefully going well. We still haven't gotten any bids back on replacement yet, so I'm still working on that. Uh, the grant for Forest Services is through. Um, we have a company that will probably come in, Bowles Tree Service. They are a licensed contractor out of Grand Forks that will come in and do a haul for us. We we'll just need to line that up and be later this fall. Uh, part of that grant was that for us to, we have to match, remember it's 50-50 match. Um, so us loaning them to use trucks or to haul it out and landfill fees, that will help cover that 50% match. And possibly if I put in, I know there's one item Jim wanted on the budget that maybe we can get in there too. I can't remember, I might even put it on the grant case. That is all that I have, unless it's on the agenda. So we'll move on to Jim. Do you have anything tonight? Um, adding on to what Paul was mentioning, uh, Arvig was on site today. There, they started boring the interstate for that new line across I-29. Um, the only thing we're waiting for is some switch gear in the substation which could be here as soon as three weeks so things are moving optimistically fast so um hope that goes well that's all i have jr did you have anything I have nothing. <clears throat> ashley nothing than what's on the agenda okay. steve do you have anything for tonight Okay. Uh, good job to your officers and uh, on the work this past weekend and the incidents that happened. So. Thank you. Uh, nothing from our city engineer tonight, so we'll move on to the beautification ticket items, which uh, the only one that we have anything would be uh, ticket 2021-005, and I believe Joyce is here to give us an update and kind of let us know how she's doing. If you want to come up to the podium, Joyce, you could.
So uh, how much time, more time do you think you need? I don't know. I mean, everything has to be wiped off and packed and I've been working five to six, seven days a week. There's, I've and been I'll keep going until I get it done. But um, it isn't going to work with my chickens to shove them in a box because some of them are too expensive. And, and to try and sell them by the box, I'd probably get 10, 15, 20 bucks when one of them are probably worth 150. So it takes time, and I'm working on it. You mentioned at one time about having an auction. Where are you at on that? We're going to, we're, well, we've got all the big equipment down to Benson, Minnesota right now for an auction. The big mixers, the fun machine, and some other big items. We got a bunch at an auction that's going on auction this next month at um, my, that my grandson took back, but he couldn't take so much his time because he had to take my car with him in his trailer. So they're coming again this next Sunday for three, four days to help. We got a couple of the rooms them and the big stuff and got it down to the to the auction. Like a fourteen hundred pound mixer. So we have been working on the big stuff to get it get a bakery sale. So if we said we gave you till the end of the summer or the beginning of fall, like to, beginning of October, if you came back and at our first meeting and kind of gave us an update. We're, we're open to get it done by the end of September, but it's, it's a lot of work. So if we give you till the end of September, if you came back in October and gave us an update, the rest of the commission okay with that? I'm good. Okay. So yeah, but just come back to us again in October, the first meeting in October. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Joyce. So there shouldn't be any other BC ticket items that I'm aware of, I believe. Um, is anything on the sheriff's department or is this still referred? They're referred, they were waiting for the um, contract that we signed off and, um, the, and the ordinance that was signed off, so we're just waiting on that approval. And I forgot to ask Charlie, I sent him an email and asked him today if it was done. Our, it was approved at the commission meeting, at the county commission, it's whether or not the, the district court has signed off on it yet, is what I read. That's what we're waiting for. As soon as that is signed off, hopefully then we have that first one. Um, How about the one, uh, uh, 21004, that's kind of the same situation? That is the same situation. So Just now the arraignment would be this next court session, if that contract went through. Yeah. Um, Two hundred six Fourth Avenue Southeast. I believe that's the one. It is the log-sided one. I don't know, if, Jim. If you guys would have time, just there's piles there. That might be the easiest just to go. It's the rentals is out, and it's been sitting there just being left. Is the owner okay with that? So Jim don't get shot at. There's no owner on the property. Which no, but I mean the owner of the property. Which which address? The Blumstein House, I believe. Okay. For what, they left some stuff on the boulevard, is that what? It's not on the boulevard. They've left the dumpster, their garbage cans are there with stuff and a couple other piles of stuff. 
it's obvious. It's obvious, yeah. Okay. Just keep a track of time and then we'll send it. They're that. gone. They're gone. Yep. Okay. And then if that's done, we can close that ticket, I believe. So um, the other question I had, and this is more for Ashley and JR. On the 2021-004 and on our electrical side, they both should have bills that weren't paid. Last year, we were going to put them in to go on the tax lien, but it was too late. So when is the deadline for that? Do you remember, Ashley? It's this month, and I've been talking to John about it. Um, and he was going to look further into it, but I haven't heard anything. Do you know, JR? Because there has to be some sort of hearing, and it has to be sometime here in August. Correct. It's August sometime. I can't remember the date myself, but I'll look into it or talk with John to get back to you to make sure we get that on the books. Okay. Because then we want to make sure, especially on that one, that any bills right. for the containers and all that get mm -hmm. charged out. So I'll talk about with we'll you that later. We just want to make sure it didn't get missed. Is there quite a few that you know about that we should send on? I asked Julie to get me a list because she does a utility billing and we've been a little busy with other things at the office, so I'll have to double check with her tomorrow to see where that list is at. Okay. All right. Then our next item of business will be the citywide paving project. Which I don't think there's an update on that. I have nothing. I have nothing on it. I I want to get together with Stephen Taylor, or Tyler, or whichever his name is. Taylor. Taylor. Yes, Taylor. I, I've got some different thoughts on some of these, some of the street projects. So, but I don't have anything to talk about it tonight. So. Okay. Mike, anything on the process? I'm guessing not because you're uh, No, not till next week. Okay. Uh, see the Community Foundation update. What I had read, John had sent an email to get things worked out. They were going to have a board meeting on this early this month. I can't remember the exact date. But hopefully we're the process is moving forward. So Who's having the board meeting? The Foundation or the Belva? The Belva. Okay. Railroad Park, there's no update. The mural contest, uh, I'm looking into a little bit more. Um, the winner, she charges $20 per square foot for to do the, the mural. If we did that whole side, we'd need to find about 20000 for the budget to pay for it. So I'm looking at different sizes and how we can make it work and look nice. Or if there's another spot we could put it or something. I've also thought about could we uh, buy just uh, plywood and have it painted on there and then it could be put up somewhere. <clears throat> what about anybody else? Have you talked to anybody else? I haven't talked to anybody else. Um, sorry. <clears throat> uh, so I'll try to look. And when we have our beautification meeting, then hopefully we'll find out some more information on that too. Any other questions on that? Uh, 1881, that is moving forward and I believe we'll have a hearing at the next meeting. Today. I can talk to John, but that sounds good to me. I'm trying to remember the email back that he sent me today. And he's working on that progress. It's been, the letter's been sent to this to the school district, so the next part is the public hearing, if I remember right. Uh, special assessment committee, we do have a third member. Paul had that. I can talk to him yet? No, I haven't. Oh, I, didn't, okay. I didn't have any information. <laughs> oh, okay, I thought you were going to talk to him. Paul Brown. Paul Brown. Yeah. Because I couldn't remember, I'm trying to remember who Paul Brown is. Mm -hmm. it's right across the corner. My neighbor. Yep. Kitty, right on the opposite corner. Of That's okay. And he's also been on vacation. So. Yeah, he just got back from vacation. Yeah. So uh, I will we'll check with him, we'll talk with him, and then hopefully next week we can get that settled. I believe he's retired. Uh, 
He does. I, don't know. I think he's partially retired, but he was going back to get his doctorate degree. Okay. I know. I know that the only reason I know that is because he said or the phone number was his work number, and he said that that's don't work anymore. He's not there. So. Oh. I think he was getting it in political science or something. Was he? Yeah. He's very. If you don't know him, he's pretty sharp. In my opinion, he's pretty sharp talent. Yep. Um, we'll skip to I quick because I know the budget will take a long time. So, JR, do you have anything, uh, any updates on the outdoor drinking ordinance? Nothing yet. I did look into it for a little bit, but I don't have any drafts or anything to okay. that effect yet. Perfect. All right, so then we will open it up for the 2023 budget discussion. Um, okay, for one second. Are you going to be in contact with Steve at the same time on that? Yeah, I'm going to talk to him and see what his thoughts are. Thank you. So if you look on this first page right here, um, or the first page of this packet, that would be what our certificate of our current budget, the way that it sits. A little different than the one that was sent out to you guys. Ashley and I worked on it today a little bit. Um, so we would be asking the public for $315,850 to be levied for the general fund, which would be an increase of just shy of $50,000 compared to last year. Um, part of that, if you look in the general fund packet, that's in the 11 by 17 sheets. Or eight and a half by 11 sheets. Um, it would be the third page down on expenditures for the general fund. You can see that we've had quite a bit of increase in from last year to this year. Um, our total city expenditures is at 560, well, 567,000 compared to 487 last year. And then our police department, our sheriff contract went up Last year we were at, or this current year we're looking at a projected of 211. Next year we're looking at 247. Well, let's 247. And there is, with that, there's 10,000 in for the fire department. Is that the one time payment? Or, or is that just their regular budget? Their regular budget, I believe. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Because we gave ten thousand, right, for a budget plus ten thousand for their new grants from the last year. Correct. And last year we were taking in. And our total expenditures for everything. Uh, last year we were at 177 or 778,000. This coming up here we're looking at 967,000 dollars. That is just our general fund. Um, that 50,000. The reason that Ashley and I kind of looked at trying to find a way to raise that was um, we're going to have to raise our water and sewer rates to help pay for the the USDA loan and we haven't done a rate study so it's hard to look at our electrical to make sure it's true up um, with this way of doing it we would we would not transfer as much money out of the electrical fund we would be asking 50,000 from property taxes. Which we can, I think Ashley put it out there, we can levy up to 110 mils. And this puts us at about 67, if I remember right. 
105. 105. Is what we can, is the max. Is the max, yep. So yeah, 105 is our max melt, and we're currently, I think it was 60, right around 67, somewhere in there. Yeah. Let's see if we can pull it up. Now this is with the 6% raise across the board and looking at adding that extra public works employee as we're moving in and out. Um, if you look through some of them, you'll see that a lot of them are turning out in the red, which is kind of concerning. To me, our three biggest funds, or I should say the, our three biggest revenue funds would be the electrical and water and then sales tax. Three point one seven million is where we're at. We're no, we're at last year. Fifty fifty-four, I wanna say. Fifty-four or fifty-seven. Um, I sent it in that spreadsheet. Let me see if I can pull it up. So our water treatment. Our water department, um, as of this year, it's looking like 54.35. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I didn't want her to feel bad if you sent out that sheet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was pulling it up. I put everything in so I could pull it up. It was taking longer. I just forgot that you had sent it. <clears throat> so it'd be just a shy over 10 mils that we'd be moving up. So remember, this is not set in stone. This is, if we did send this off, this would be. We couldn't go any higher than this. We can come down from this as we work through, um, which we need to work through this a little bit more. Um, what's concerning to me on a lot of things is like the water budget. After this year, we're we're projecting to be in the red about 375,000. Our garbage department, we need to look at. We're projected after this year to be in the red, 32,000. And our electrical fund, projected to be in the red, 234,000. If we take the 50,000 out of it, that means that we're not going to, normally we would transfer out of the electrical fund to the general fund to help cover. We bring that down from 110 to 60,000. 60, and hopefully then our, our um, Electrical fund next year should be right around um, about 44,000 in the red. So we're getting that number down. Yes, Rick? <clears throat> For as long as I know, hasn't the electrical fund been a, on a, a, a black? For a long time, the electrical fund has been black. The first time that we know of, that I know of, was 2019, we hit the red. Um, we were at about 50,000 in the red that year, and the last couple of years we've been in the black. But this year, especially, we're going to have a big in the red, but a lot of that is under the interstate, that new line we're putting in. 
and upgrades to the substation and a few other things. Um, we still have money in the bank, so there is some, but that number is being depleted also. After this year, we're down to about 130,000 left in there. So we got to make sure that we bring that back up. I don't want to be arbitrary, or I don't think we should, um, without the rate study getting done to look at where our rates should be at. And I know we've been, uh, what I've been told is as far as rates in the past, we've been pretty, whenever there's been an increase from Missouri River, that's when we've increased our rates. Um, so we haven't always looked at covering some of our costs. And with some of the infrastructure upgrades, we will have to look at a rate study down the road. So. Um, on the water and sewer side, what was suggested to us was a dollar raise per user for the sewer and a dollar raise for the water to help. And that would pay off the USDA loan. Correct. The garbage department we need to look at just to make sure and see if it's the where we're um, losing money at. Because um, that one this year we're looking at about $70,000 in the red. recycling truck than to add a second truck to come back and take garbage there. So that was why we, we were trying to hold off as long as we could for that second truck. Because it was, because it didn't matter if the truck was full or not, they charged by the truck basically. And if we had another, if they had to go up and come back down and get two loads, then they cost that's what it costs more. And the problem is some, like, you're like me, Rick, we only have a half a dumpster most on the recycling. But then you got other people that have three dumpsters and they're full every, you know, when the time comes, so. Well, we get charged for uh, whether they recycle or not. But is there a way to simulate yourself and myself? Do we have a place where we can should we not have, or is that what's down there at the armory? I know there's places you can dump stuff. Is that recycled? That's, 
basically both. cardboard, okay. just cardboard. Yeah. But they do have dumpsters there too. No, they're not all for not anywhere. We, don't. we used to have dumpsters where you could you could take your aluminum and glass. And oh, like that. Going. Okay, sorry. I mean, I don't have any answers to it, but I'm just wondering if there's some way we can save on this for when they've got family to do it. You know, I see some got two two containers out there, and we we don't even have this for one. I think we just need to reevaluate and talk with uh, waste management. Waste waste management. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. The other suggestions that I had brought up that we may need to look at um, is in. Four fifty three, the municipal infrastructure something fun. So just on that fund, that's the one that we're getting from the North Dakota. Revenue from the oil shares, or the prairie dog mummy, it's called. We are projected to get, with everything, we should be at right around 416,768. Or did we get an additional 416, Ashley? I'm looking through a sheet. That should be an additional. I thought it was a 2460, but. Oh, I got that one. I had I printed that one. I thought it was 40. It's not bad. I thought I had sent it to you guys. That's what's in there right now, but we're, and we, yeah, we're expected to get somewhere. Right. Correct. And I printed it off, I just can't find it. But I thought I sent it to you guys. Right here. Yeah, so total. Is that with the 125? Well, that's, we got to double check. Is it an additional 125 or is it? The 125 from 2020, and now there's another 125. I'm not uh -huh. sure on that one. For sure, we'll have about 416,768 in there, and that money is to be used for infrastructure that benefits the community as a whole, and it has to be for existing infrastructure. So as we look at some projects that may be for the whole city, that's what we look at. I need to move to this too. Yep. Cash on, on, on 212 on the sales tax, is that is that 2% then? Which? 212 sales tax. For which on two twelve, where are you seeing two percent? So 
sales tax, 1% goes to, are you talking about lodging, or are you talking about? Well, I'm just talking 212 sales tax on the revenue side. Sales tax collection is 240000 Is that 1% or 2%? Um, I know. Because don't we have, I thought Because we have two, no, it should be two. Two and a half because one percent goes to sales tax, one percent goes to debt retirement, and 0.5 goes to HEDC. Yes, so it'll so be 2.5. Would be 1.5, and then the debt retirement account is where the other one percent. Right. Okay. Yes. Sorry. So the other debt retirement account, the other one percent would go into fund. Five thirty-five. So one and a half and two twelve and one and five thirty-five. Correct. And with the debt retirement account, so if you guys want to go to five thirty-five. You're supposed to be paying that out and paying out. Um, the purpose of that one was to pay off debt. That benefits the whole city. Um, currently, at the end of this year, we're expected to have about $490,339.83 in that. That account in the past, we have paid off different projects, we put money and paid off different bonds, different loans. Um, oh, that would make it easier. <laughs> so um, we do need to look at paying some of that out because we almost should be zeroing that out every year to pay off some loans. Um, but the water tower would be one place that we could do it. Um, and we'll, there is a recommendation that we put $202,200 towards that. And if we're to do that, we need a motion to move that. That's a good place for it. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Properly moved and seconded. Moved by Dave, seconded by Mike. Any other discussion? So. So you're putting this towards the water treatment plant or the water tower? The water the tower. tower. The principal, principal on it. Principal on it. So that should drop and what's, off. And what's the principal on the water tower right now? 957000 So that would drop our, by about four years. By doing this, instead of 2029, we should have it paid off around 2025. And why did you decide to go with the water tower versus the water treatment? Just up that coin or? Because that's the one with the biggest debt. Okay. It's the highest dollar amount that's left um, due, I do believe. Or is it the water treatment plant? The water treatment has the highest one, but um, I don't think it would be a bad idea to start paying off some of these ones to get paid off early where the the water treatment affects more than just the residents. And then on the which on the water treatment, if you're wondering, Paul, that was at about three million right now. Just so I understand these funds, is it if they hit zero, some of these go away and some of these that have these balances can be moved to others to pay off those other funds? The, the debt retirement. retirement, yes. And there are ones that um, I'm working on, Julie and I are working on, that are out of Starion. I thought they were out of Bank of North Dakota, so I called their own bank, but I got those um, balances as well so we can update the um, debt sheet but we have to get a hold of Starion to see, because there are a couple funds that should be closed or close to it, and then once those payments are all done, we have to keep it open.
open usually for about three years just to bring in any trickle down of assessments or payments. And then after that, yes, we can close it out and then it gets transferred into the general fund and from there we can use it as we need. Is it just the debt retirement that can be moved or are there other ones that can move to? There'd be other ones. Okay. Uh, the other ones possibly if there's money left would be the Prairie U, the River Bend, and there's like four. There's one other, the water treatment, or the water, Highway 200, I think, is done also. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Rick. Uh, thinking about uh, what Paul said, why did you pick the ones you picked? Did, uh, and I have no clue. Is there any, what's the interest on these various projects? Is there some? And how much are they uh, when you're looking at paying them off? Are you taking the highest interest? ones with the highest interest or just ones that you just want to get down? The interest varies on each one. Um, yeah. One What's, second. Are you paying off the highest one? It makes a lot of difference. I do have it. I just. I have a lot of papers, so bear with me. Okay, so the. Julian, I don't understand. There's two, maybe you can understand it. There's two water tower loans out. One's at 2.5 and one's at 0.5. I don't understand the rest of them. Water treatment plant is at two percent. So yes, the so the difference is there's two funds. One that we are paying at an interest rate of point or two point five percent with administration fee of point five percent. So we're at three percent on that, and that is our outstanding balance on that is a hundred thousand. The larger loan for the water tower, or excuse me, this is the water tower project. The majority of it is at 0.5 interest rate and then a 0.5 administration fee. So the smart thing would be to do would be to pay off this hundred thousand on the one loan. On the high on, on the water tower, so that'd be about a hundred thousand. And then this other one, the the water treatment plant, we have one point four one point five million left outstanding balance, and that interest rate is at two and administration fee of a half percent. So the, to answer your question, the water tower does have some at a higher rate than the water treatment. I must, I must have misunderstood you. I, said, I thought you said there was three million on the water treatment earlier. That's what I thought. That must have been the total amount that we borrowed. Okay. Right. So the outstanding balance right now is 1.49. 1. Okay. Is there an overrun or an afterthought or, or preliminary engineering that they did? I, don't know. I got these right before I left work. And then I noticed on the debt retirement, that's 1% of the sales tax, right? Mm -hmm. Under two and a half. You got yep. that at 202. And you got it back here for sales tax on 212. You got 1.5. But you only have that at 240. That number needs, yeah, those Thank two you. numbers, sales tax, need to change because I don't think those are right. Which one? On both the sales taxes, the debt retirement and 
um, 212 and 535, the amounts need to change. Because we are looking at this year, if, when I went back in and looked at it, probably about five, 550,000, I think, if I remember right. Through sales tax, we're looking at generating this year. So the debt retirement might be pretty close, but the sales tax at 212 is probably about right. Probably about 60,000 as well. Yep. Okay. Just by going with the 200,000 on that one percent. So. so back to the motion of now I set it here somewhere. Yeah, you look like you. Yes. Do you mind while you're looking for that? What what other you know, this is for debt retirement, what other areas other than the water tower? And the product treatment plan. What other areas do we have a lot of debt requirement to work on? I'm assuming Prairie View is getting down there. That was, River Bend should be a little nothing. Both of those should be done. And the street project. The street project would be yeah. the next one, but we haven't figured out what we're doing yet. No, I'm talking about the 2000, uh, 2007 one. That should be uh, that's all specials. But uh, right. wasn't there another one? So Julie and I were, that's where I have to get a hold of Starion because I didn't realize there was, that we used two different banks. And so I only reached out to Bank of North Dakota. I didn't realize we were using Starion. So tomorrow I'm going to reach out to Starion and see if I can get the loan amounts for those projects. Mm -hmm. And then I'll have a better idea of what. So basically what I'm asking is what, what all can we use the debt retirement for besides the water treatment plant? And the water tower. Is there so, uh, the river bend is done yeah. and, and paid off. Water, the water main project is done and paid off. The 2007 street and Prairie View that is to looks to be paid off this year. That's the one she has to double check on story in with. The highway 200, the 2008 highway 200 527. We're not there's two. Sure. There's two of them. One looks like it was paid off early, and then the other one appears to be done this year. But she has to double check on those two. Because it looks like specials are done on that one, but we still show that there's payments. So Julie and I aren't really sure what happened there. So that's why I need to double check with Starion and see where we're at. Okay. And then, so the ones that we know that we have to pay off yet are the water tower, water treatment plant. Kingman Sewer, uh, we have a bank loan for the equipment and the building. And the building. Yep. So those are the, there's one, two, three, four that we could use. Kingman Sewer, equipment, and building? Correct. And so that fund is supposed to be used for what would benefit the citizens the most. So debt retirement, the two best places that you could put it would be then the water tower or um, you know how much is that on the Kingman sewer and that Kingman sewer looks like it's quite a bit because the it gets Paid more and more as we go. Which oh, no, one was sorry, it? I was looking at the wrong one. So sixty thousand, and it's supposed to be paid off in twenty twenty eight. So the King, Jim, the Kingman, that was the one that was done by the by the. Campground in, and that's the other one. Yeah, yeah, that's for the West Side Sewer. West Side Sewer. And that's the one that Trail County, I mean, that Hillsborough ADC was supposed to pay on some? Correct. And I don't see that in here. I know they've made payments this past year, and I don't see that in the revenues for that Kingman Sewer Edition. The last one was 2019. I know they made payments this year. I'll ask Julie. Okay. 
Paul, it looks like that 17000 I think that is the payment under assessments. That seems to be the right amount that HEDC paid. But did you do that in 2022, or was it last year you did? I think we just recently did it, last meeting or so. So we wouldn't have it yet? It wouldn't have it in this. In 2021, we, it shows here yet, but we just made it in 2022. So we wouldn't, yeah, we wouldn't have it then. If you just made it in July, yep. so then I wouldn't put that in the fund statements until August. So you guys, you, you made payments of 17000 in 2020 and 2021? That sounds correct. Okay. And then you made another 17000 again this year? So we'll go back to the motion that we have on the floor. That is that we'd have $202,200 to go towards the water tower payment. Is that where we would still like it to go? Or would, or would you do the 100 and then, and then do the other 200, the 102 to the water treatment fund? It's higher interest. Great. Or do we want to spend more in there? Like I said, there's. Then you can even go so far as like what we said, what is the interest on the other ones for the equipment and all that stuff too. So, yeah. Do we know what it is that's on the equipment? I don't know. That's just making it more. Julie um, probably does not have that here with I me. I was thinking it was around four, if I remember right. That part I don't know. That part I don't have with me. It depends on how important that is to everybody, I guess. Should we hold off on that portion of it? Well, I think we can definitely do the do the what we got on the on the hundred thousand on that two and a half. Do that, but that's on the one loan. That's on one of the ones. That's on one of the ones. What's the interest on that? Uh, that two and a half, three and a half. So it would be three. Three and a half. Three percent. Three percent. Three percent. So would you? Do we want to amend the motion so it's a uh, hundred or whatever's needed to pay off that loan amount on? The loan number 141.5 with Bank of North Dakota. For right now, there's uh, outstanding balances right at 100,000. But I'm sure there's interest in whatever else that may be charged. I'll amend my motion to. Okay. Dave amends the motion so that it's that. You need a second on that? Yes. I'll second. Mike seconds. Um, there is other two other loans that we have out too that is the water major. Because these might be paid off, correct? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, that's the one where people are done paying specials, but we still have a balance, principal balance. So I just had to ask, I have to ask Mark um, if that's normal or if something happened that I don't know about in past years. I'm not sure. Or was there supposed to be funds and it didn't get transferred? That could be too. I don't know. That's why I have to ask. So on that question that we're talking about, it's the, the two for the the Highway 200 project, one for the clean water lines, and one for the um, sanitary improvements. Both of those are at 3%, and it looks like one has... Do we have those, or do you just have that? Issue? He's looking at them. I'm looking at them. Uh, it looks like... It actually doesn't say how much is left. So that's why we're confused. Like yeah. it doesn't have an outstanding balance. Those got sent to me. The reason you guys don't have them, they got sent to me literally at the end of the day. So the reason I asked is if we had it, then we can look at it. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> so the motion is that we'll pay off the <coughs> the one loan, the five forty one point five. I think it is. One forty one point five. One forty one point five. Is there any other discussion? 
Mike? Yes. Paul? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Dave? Yes. And a yes for me. I have interest on what, what would qualify for just debt retirement so that we kind of have yeah. So we'll figure that out for the next meeting as what interest rates we're at mm -hmm. and where else we should be putting it off. Yeah, this is just a preliminary budget, yeah. Yeah. so we can always come down on numbers. We just can't go up. Hey, yep. Can I ask you a question? Yep. Uh, you were talking about the various things that are going to be paid off this year. Okay, you were all before this, and I, if I'm getting ahead of the ahead of you, just tell me. But uh, you're talking about the various things that are going to be paid off. You're talking about the increases in next year's budget. My question probably is to Ashley: How much are we going to save for next year when these are paid off? When we figure, is that figured in for your budget when you're talking about increasing water, sewer, electricity, and stuff? How much are we actually going to save next year when we don't have any of these that we're going to be paying off? How much are we, you know, that, it's, to me it's interesting. I don't have the exact figure, um, but I know just from, if just thinking about like my own specials and everybody's are different, I know you're, you're talking about like as a person, as a citizen, right? No. Or you in mean the, as a city. city? I'd have to figure that out. I don't have that number, well, Rick. How can we have a, I mean, I, this is a preliminary meeting. Though. Right. Okay, but that's something I think we need to know before we have another meeting is to know exactly how much we're going to save, am I correct? So, before we come up with figures of increases. What I can tell you, Rick, is that the two street projects that are appearing to come up, when we are, are the 2007 street project, when that is done, our payments currently are $335,000. But you said you got like two or three or so projects. So that's one of the projects. The other project that is coming up that's supposed to go off is the highway 200. If that one is paid off, then that's about 35,000. You have more than that. Uh, that's four of them right there. So it'd be three hundred thousand dollars payments that we pay out out of special. So that doesn't come out of the general fund. That comes out of the specials. Uh, that should be coming off this year about the way it looks. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, so we'd be levying 315,850 is what we're looking at. Uh, we'd levy an additional 10,000 that goes in the emergency fund, 10,000 that goes into the cemetery fund, the airport we pay 20,000, and the rec district is at 20. So we'd be looking at 375,850 total amount levy. They can levy, levy up to four mills, and when I talked to Les, he asked me to get him at that four mill mark, and that's exactly 20 grand. What is the airport? What is that money for? I know they get federal funding for just about everything out there, so maybe you can't answer that, but I, I'm curious. I think it's a $5,000 increase, that's uh, about a 30% increase. There is local share parts of the grants that they have to pay for, and I believe the maintenance and different things that aren't covered. That they're not getting, the, I can't remember if they're getting state or uh, county sales tax also, or county 
I know they get something from the county because he had sent me the same budget that he sent over to the county. But he had asked me to get them to four mills, and that's what it came out to when I, to get them that four mills was the 20 grand. I guess it answers your question. I don't agree with that, but that's answers it. That would be the their board that you'd have to yeah. talk about. They are they are already getting three point two three, correct? Yeah. So they're increasing it by point seven. Any other questions on the budget? A lot of questions, but probably not. <laughs> I should say, any questions on the general portion of the budget? See, Levi, just a quick question, and I, I, I know I'm, I'm on the wrong side of the fence here, but on the sheriff's budget, what does he figure that extra $37,000 is warranted for? So what they're doing, which is nice on our part, uh, Previously, we had to buy a vehicle every so many years. Now they're putting it in a special fund, so it's every year spread across the board. So we're not going to see that influx of the vehicle. a vehicle charge of fifty thousand every couple few years. So that would be one year it's one one ninety, and then the next year it's two forty because of a vehicle charge. That was the reasoning behind it. They went across the board. They got all county all cities that are doing it to do that, that it's one flat fee. We do, this is budgeted and they do go by actual numbers, so sometimes we believe this year we had some money left in the account that they'll... What was the kind of about sure if, whatever happened about three months ago when uh, uh, the brewery was waiting for the sheriff to sign off on, uh, on the permits and did that ever happen? Have we got a signed piece of paper at the lawyer's office or here uh, that was supposed to happen? As far as for... Oh, you guys were fighting over it here about uh, uh, his permitting that if the sheriff signs off, we can let him go ahead and open the doors and whatever. Yeah, we have copies of all that. I mean, he's got a display at the place too. His liquor it? license? Yeah. Liquor, you're, not, you're talking liquor license and everything that we were talking about? Speak up, Paul. Were you talking about liquor license, or what were you talking I about? I presume that was part of it. Yeah, that, that's, we have copies of all that, yeah. And he has them displayed in his business, too. So. Did the sheriff sign off? That's what I asked. That's, that's why I was wondering which one, because the, the sheriff wouldn't sign off on the, on okay. the state liquor license. Well, well I think what you're talking minutes of your meeting here about two and a half months I, ago. I think, I think what you're maybe talking about is the, is the fence, maybe? Yeah. Correct. On the, the patio, patio fence, and we just approved that. That last meeting, didn't we? Or a meeting before? Last meeting. Last meeting. So I don't know if anything has been done about it since. If the form has been written up, or we, we approved the last draft of it last meeting, and I don't think you know the final. You know, I don't know if it was how that because it was in there, right, for the signature from the sheriff. So now whether or not that was ever presented to him, that would be a good question. I assume no. No, yeah. I haven't. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I haven't, we haven't really seen the last. You know, we, we approved it with changes. You know, so we really have. We what we what we need is a final, the final of it. So that and then that should have that. That should have the form that goes to the sheriff to sign it because there was a signature line on it. Whether or not it got done is a good question. I think you're right. I don't know if it was done or not. So. If I remember right, when we met with Steve and Charlie. Steve said that he was okay with the, the last liquor license change. Yep. Mm -hmm. Whether or not he signed off over there, I don't know because we haven't issued one a right. patio permit for him yet. So, if, Paul, was that with the agreement to change, but he's got to put up the actual barricade? The, the way I remember it was it was supposed to be the fence. It was supposed to be a fence, yeah. Okay. Within but within so many months he had to do it, so so to answer the question, as far as we know, he does not have a permit, nor have we wished any patio permits at this point. Correct. Are you going to be able to follow up on that? Yep, to I make can. sure that, that paperwork mm -hmm. is gotten. And then that makes who, would, who would make sure that it gets to him? Or he hasn't really 
apply for a patio permit, per se, because they just approved it, so. Right. Great. I'll work with Ashley to make sure we make some type of application or some other form to tack on to the liquor license, and then we'll send a courtesy copy over to him. Sure. Does that answer your question? Sure. That takes care of that one, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we got this, we got one of them. On the budget, it does look a little bit worse. And part of the hard part for Ashley to get done is that a lot of the transfers that we're supposed to get done in over the last several years haven't. So we're trying to catch up on those and make sure that the funds are where they're supposed to be. I will assure that there is money in the bank, enough to cover everything. It's just that they're not necessarily in the correct funds because there was. We're still fixing. Still fixing. Is uh, on the generation project those those payments that we get looks like like one hundred and thirty six thousand every year? Can you explain that, Jim? What if that's for just what you generate for electricity? How does that? How do we get that payment? Or that? We talked about that earlier, and, and uh, we're not quite sure. Okay. I know we do pay them whenever we run the generators, but not that amount, so I'm not sure where it's coming from, but uh, do you understand what it's for? Do you understand what it's for? No, no, I don't. It's set up for um, major repair if one of the generators was to go down, whether it's an engine or the windings, so just so we're backed up with, and I don't know what the cap on that is. So I know that back in 2020, you, you transferred, or you, uh, transferred out $100,000 for doing repairs, correct? That's what you use that for? To kind of get some of that evidence? Yeah. yeah. So what kind of numbers do you think that they need to be held in that account? Because that, if I'm reading it right, was it 760? Is that, if I'm reading it right, this is 520. Well, this might be a wrong one. Because you changed them. <laughs> Let me look at your new one. The fund would still be the same. Five twenty. What's what's your question, Paul? Well, I'm just wondering if there's any if there's if, if we are, we're looking at doing a lot of electrical work. Is there any way we can transfer some more out of that to help on the electrical side? Is what I'm looking. At. That's kind of where I'm trying to get to. So I asked Mark about this one, and this should actually. This was a specific project, if I understood correctly, for to get the generators up and running. Um, and he said that this should actually, since this project is done, we should actually close out this account and get, I think he said, like a four, 400 account um, set up specifically for the generators to where this money still have this payment going, but go into a 400 account so that it is building up money. So if something happens to the generator, say something breaks on the generator, or we need a new generator, that we have the money in the fu the funds in the in here to be able to take out. My understanding is it's only for the generators. Does that answer your question? Well, you did transfer some out, so it must not be only for the generators. There was work done on the generator. Work done on the generator. Right. Yes. Okay. That's a different hundred thousand dollars than I'm thinking of. What's a hundred thousand dollars I'm thinking of, Dave? That you you did to kind of take some of the things on the list. Where did that money come from? Out of elect. You mean where we dropped down on the electrical transfers? No, no. Where you? No, I'm talking in past. Before I was even on, you transferred some money to help take care of some of the list. Well, we didn't transfer. We just said that you could spend up to a hundred thousand. Out of the electrical fund. Out of the electrical fund. Okay. Electrical fund reserves. Okay. And general maintenance. Yeah. The electric. Just well, it's just a different hundred thousand. Correct. Right. Thanks for clarifying that. Yep. The other thing that I'd like to see us do um, 
is on the equipment fund 450. Currently, we just transfer in money as we're paying off a loan. Should we be putting 10 or 5,000 in there additionally out of the other funds to help build that up so that if something happens and we need a piece of equipment, we have some funds set aside? How much, how much can we set aside for that without a dedicated? Is there, is there a net on that? I thought they said that in Bismarck. Didn't they, Nicole, say something about that on, on equipment that they had to have? You don't have so much unless it was dedicated. When, when I got to that amount, you had to kind of dedicate it towards a project of some sort. I could be. I don't remember that. I can reach out to Stephanie at League of Cities and ask her. I agree with Lee, I think we should be putting money aside in here. Are you, are you talking more than the 25 we transfer in now? Well, the 25 we transfer in now is paying off the loan. Because we're transferring into, the, into that account that then pays off the loan for the okay. payloader and right. the snowblower. I'm thinking back when we didn't have those loans that yeah, we were, that was just to build a bank up. So. And we were, and now we kind of quit that, okay. so we need, we need sure. to start doing that again. I think you should look into it and see how much we, and I think it's a good idea to start building up a fund. Right. And the same thing with the capital projects, the 215, because that would be another place when we looked at adding on to, we added the building on for public works, that could have been a place that we took it out of to pay help pay for that. So, Which one, 215, you said? 215 and 450. Yep. Which 15? 215 and 450. Yep. I just got to write a note. Jim, did you have any, I know you talked to Ashley about some of the equipment. Is there any other equipment we need to look at in the next few years? Um, the only thing that I can think of is... Um, the graph wing. I'm sorry? The graph wing. We wanted to add that. That's already in here. Um, yeah. Would be to... Would be the backhoe. Okay. So um, I'm not. I can't remember how old it is, and we usually try rotate that um, seven, ten years. So what did you say, Tim? I didn't hear you. Backhoe. Back 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 Otherwise, we're. I think we're doing pretty good, unless one of the older ones were something were to go wrong with it. But I think we would be repairing it before we'd be replacing it. So. Okay. As of right now, I mean, we, uh, we've we received a lot of stuff in the last few years, and we're grateful for that. It really helps us. So I think we're doing okay. You have to uh, 7500 for a new pickup, is that? That would be for replacing that 2003... The black one? The one that's, yeah, that's... Are you buying a used pickup or is that... No, what I mean, that, that would be a uh, um, state bid price. That would be out of each fund. Like yeah. the four funds would be the 75. I, I told her 30,000. The last one we bought was 24. I'm just guessing at an increase with the price of vehicles. I don't know. And that's coming out of where, actually? For the four accounts, the um, Another similar electric. Yep. So this, it says new new PW pickup seventy five hundred. That's per just fund. per fund. Per fund, okay. Yep. Wait, I don't think she put it on every fund, so okay. Yeah, yeah sorry. Sewer, okay, I get it. I get it. Now. And sorry. Two thousand for a flatbed. Or put that, on, put no, on one of your trucks. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I, for a minute, I was going, are you look, you know, looking for a 7500 dollars pair? Mm -hmm. you know? um, no. Especially purpose is only, what are you going to do with the old pickup? Put it up for bids. Oh, are you going to put it up for bids? Yeah. Didn't the last one just get sold to an employee? No. That was put, that up, was bid. put up on bids, and he bid on it. Yeah. He was. Because I had the same model pickup, and 480,000 miles on it, it was a... Hope electric pickup. I sold it to a guy in Moorhead. I know what you got for it. I got twenty-one hundred dollars for it. Okay. Maybe we should look at uh, 
when you put it up for bids, uh, do a little more advertising or uh, uh, contact Dallas. And, and that's what we do is we, we advertise for bids, and I don't know how else you... Did we not? Uh, put all all I'm figures. saying is we both did the same thing, and uh, this isn't your fault. It, uh, it's just, you know... And we've, we've done, the last one we did, a, we did an auction, we could do that and put a minimum on it, I guess, I think, so. Well, didn't that pickup go for like 500 and some dollars? It was, but that was the highest bid. That, that was the highest, highest bid. bid. Yeah. We had four or five bids. That's what it went for. Yeah. We had well, four or five bids. I had, but... I had the same vehicle with probably four times. Well, you did good. You should, we should give them to you and you can sell them. <laughs> probably could do that. Okay. <laughs> you might help it because it's money for the city. Yeah, it is. I agree. I'm not sitting here criticizing I anybody. I, I'm just I don't. Saying, I don't even want to bring up what we gave that old blade away for. So well, that's just that's, that's, that's the process. It, uh, yeah. But you know, we got to start thinking about trimming some things rather than keeping on raising everything. And somebody somewhere is going to get caught with their little short of money. Thank you, Chuck. Any other? So we'll look at adding some money into the, you want both capital projects and equipment? <coughs> that would be the place to start putting it in so we could pay for a new backhoe and some of those things. Sure. How much? We'll sit and figure it out. There's in no other discussion on the budget, I'd entertain for a motion for us to uh, submit to the county our preliminary at 318850 for the general fund and 10000 for emergency, 10000 for cemetery, 20 for airport, and 20 for rec. For a total of 375850 to be levied for the 2023 year. For the general and the airport was the emergency and all the other ones they increased? Uh, and the wreck, I believe, went up a little bit too. Mill increases, are they only allowed to go up so far? Correct. Okay. That's that spreadsheet I sent where the yeah. max is on. Paul, I can answer you one second. Um, I can write it down here. Right? Okay, last 63. year. 63.17. Last year, it was. Oh, you want the actual mills? Yeah, if we could, on emergency and cemetery, if anything went up. Um, I don't know the actual mills off the top of my head. Yeah, she had a worksheet, but I don't think you have that open. Well, you got the bills Right, so the... If I remember right there, at 1.9 or 1.8. On um, which one? On emergency and cemetery. Because they're both leveling the same amount. Okay. I want to say it's 1.8 or 1.9. I can pull it up, hold on. In the airport, they went to four. So. They went to four, yep. And the rec district was at four years. Okay. Okay. At four. Rec, rec is at four, airport's at four, cemetery is at two, and their max is two. two. Um, and then emergency is two, and general is 63.17. Thank you. Yep. To give you any idea on the 23 on the mill, what the price is going to be? Not to yet. I wouldn't think the around, tax valuation will go down. Around, it's it was a little higher. It's around five thousand. Uh, yep. That's a good way to figure the mill out. 
<laughs> yep. Thank you for that information. You're welcome. Any other questions? Do we have a motion to approve the preliminary budget? So moved. All moves. Is there a second? I'll second them. Probably moved and seconded. Is there any other further discussion? Nicole? Oops. All the do. Well, I think everything, you want to have any other questions on your side? Everything's good. And Jim, too? Can you do this? Okay. Nicole? Yes. Mike? Yes. Paul? Yes. Dave? Yes. Did I yes for me? City Hall business hours request. I'll let Ashley go. Okay. Um, we ta we've talked about this a few times, even last year, but we never actually requested this. But we would like to either, and I sent everybody, all the commissioners, a mess. Uh, a proposal letter and I forgot to print it off for myself um, we would like to either keep summer hours year-round so that um, we work Monday through Thursday 7 to 4 30 and then Fridays 8 to noon or whatever day it could be half a day on Wednesday to help with um, making up time with training purposes with if you just have like julie and i have a lot of work that we just need closed office hours um so that we can get some stuff done saturday i was at the office for six hours just so i could get some stuff done without phone ringing people coming in um different things like that the reason we are asking just to keep summer hours because that's what people are already used to but like i said it doesn't have to be Fridays because I know some people might think we just want a long weekend and that's not the case. A lot of times I'm here after the noon closing time anyways, um, but it can be Wednesday, Tuesday. It, we're just asking for some more flexibility so that we can have some quiet time where we can actually get some work done or if we have an appointment during the week that we can make that time up if we so choose. And it's not just me, it's the whole office asking. So I said I would bring it to the table. I think when Ashley and I talk, and also talk with Julie and Sarah, it would be good for us, for them to have some time to get some stuff done. Whether we say it's not necessarily every Wednesday, could be every other Wednesday. Uh, we have some big items that aren't getting accomplished because they're running out of time. One being is our rate study. Uh, another one is our East Central Water True Up. They've just got to sit down and be able to have that time. And I, whether there's a way to do this to make it work so that we have some dedicated time that they can work without phone ringing and different things. That way it's pre-planned ahead of time, not necessarily people will know when the office is closed. We could schedule special times for people to come in during those, but it was just a request that they would pass. Yes, Rick. How about the people that are coming in? Are they, is there people coming in at seven in the morning? I mean, I don't. I not I'm not, uh, I'm not uptown that much, but I don't see any uh, abundance of cars standing up here at seven in the morning. We do and, get and some people. What about people. the public? Are we going to take care of them or what? Yeah, you got. Uh, three people in the office now and now you want to shut it down? Uh, I, don't, I don't quite get that. We're not we shutting have, it down. Well, right? you are for a period of time. But we don't have time to train. Sarah, there are things that Sarah should be doing that we have not had time to train because today I had three people in my office. We still serve the public and that's what we want to do, but we also need to make sure we're getting our work done. And right now, there's some things like Levi said is not getting done because I am way different than the last auditor. If somebody comes in and wishes to speak with me, I allow them to come into my office and speak with me. I'm not going to tell them to get out. That's just not, to me, that's not 
that is not good customer service. If they have a question, I'm going to do my best to answer it, and that's the same with the city staff. And so we're just asking for time. A lot of times I come in 6, 7 o'clock in the morning before the office opens. Well, right now we're open at 7, but I come in a lot before the office even opens just so I can get in there and focus and get some work done. I say after hours quite frequently for the same reason because it's really hard to get something done when you're in the middle of something and then the phone rings or when you're in the middle of something and somebody comes in the office. It's hard to consistently get work done. Well, you know, I'm not comparing myself, but when I was in business, I had people coming in and out all the time and I got my work done. And uh, the, th the thing of it is, you know, you, you hear a lot of people saying you're gone. You're gone to some sport event. When am I gone? I don't know, coaching or something. I've heard this be before. And I'm not picking on you because you compared yourself to the former auditor. You're much better than that. So don't think I'm picking on you. I'm just saying, I think we've got to think about the public and the people that are, are uh, uh, paying everybody's salaries. I'm in the office Monday through Friday. And during volleyball, I do coach. But that is also something that when I had my interview was very important that I got involved with the community and that's a second income for me. And so I come in early and yes, I leave at three, but I'm here every single day. Why don't we, uh, we want to talk about taking a uh, public good seven o'clock in the morning and I agree with Rick. I, I drive around town all the time. Jim Anderson will attest to that. Uh, because uh, I, I got my nose in everybody's business. Uh, open the damn office up at 8 o'clock. Keep it open till whatever your hours permit for the five-day hourly week, if that's 5 o'clock. Run like normal hours. And this idea about having uh, free time, we got by here with an auditor and an assistant for years. Everything got done probably a hell of a lot better than it's getting done now. And that's Things not have changed. Anybody, I'm just saying, uh, we got a lot more going on. We got a lot more people working. But uh, coming at seven o'clock, all that tells me is you're going to be in the office for an hour. My God, if nobody's out there, you should be getting lots of work done. And this idea you're answering the phone, are you the designated one to answer the phone? I'm not, no. But there's times where I have to. Oh, if I'm the only one in the office, I got to answer it. Is it Julie there every day? Not every day. She has appointments for herself, for Dan. Sarah has appointments for children. There's times well, that I'm in there alone. Appointments only going to be once in a while. They can't be every day of every week. So that's not what we're. That's not the reason behind this, Rick and Chuck. What What I see this being is is that it's a part of our redundancy plan that is not in place. We hired another person to help help with the work, but also to learn what the other two are doing. And what's not happening for the last two years, what since we've had this position thereabouts, is that each one is having to learn, let's say, Banyan on their own because we don't have time in the day for the three of them to sit down for an hour or two to get working on Banyan or to work on fund accounting or to work on the budget or those things that the knowledge that needs to get passed around so that we can do a better job. Because what happened, which was really good, is when uh, Leslie was here and Julie was here, they knew what they were doing. They've been here for a long time. I don't think this is a long-term thing that we may, I hope we don't have to do forever, but this could be something that we could shut it down once in a while. I mean, it's no different than other places having to go do training for a day here or there. That's what we're looking at, is just getting the okay to sit down, do training amongst themselves, so that we can do it. You mean the eight times in a month, sometimes when it gets slower, that they have time to do this? There isn't. I, I, I find it hard to believe, but I, I don't work in there, so I wouldn't know. Uh, I, I just... I know it's, it's hard to believe, but the phone rings probably, on average, once every 15, 20 minutes. Well, I manage a couple places in this town, in fact. Uh, one place had 21 employees, 
we had a secretary bookkeeper there that answered the phone. And I mean, when you say so many per minute, I'll bet you that took maybe 20 phone calls every half hour. So the other thing that you have to remember is that we are fixing things from 2018. 18. I, I That's what we're trying to, and it is not that they're doing a bad job. It's not that they're not doing their job. If they're trying to do their regular job, plus fixing and catching up from since 2018. And training. And the only training. thing I'll add here is go ahead and do what you think is proper to do, but don't let it get cast in stone that she comes back two years from now when you want to cut it out. And she says, oh, that was part of my program that you gave me. If it's going to be a cast in stone for the rest of the time, uh, uh, no, I, if we would do this, I would say that we do it for six months, see how it went, and reevaluate and kind of go from there, if that's what we want to do. You know, in, in, uh, in defense of Ashley, I know from what's going on, you are correcting a heck of a lot of problems that weren't addressed before. I know that, and uh, I appreciate what you've done. I just. I just want to see that, I mean, by God, I was open from 7 in the morning till 8 at night to take care of everything that I had to do. And that's what I'm saying is, I, don't, I just like to see it be more customer friendly, you know, for all of us. And I think it will be, when the times are shut down, it doesn't necessarily have to be, we could say, from 10 to 2, where people we don't are not going to see as many or from one to four, whatever it is, where you're not going to see people coming in, where there are those lulls, but at least if you can, if we can publish that ahead of time that says on the second and third Wednesday of the month from X time to X time, the office will be closed. You can email or leave a voicemail message for us to get back. If it's an emergency with the outage, we have the public works number there, which brings me up to another point before I forget. Uh, I'll add this in quick. Uh, I think we should add, because it's hard, not everybody knows that number for the outage, that when there is an outage, which number to call. So it'd be a good idea maybe next year to send out a calendar, a magnetic calendar that we could put on the fridge with the number of, this is the emergency outage number and possibly even the recycling schedule on it, something similar to that. And I don't I'll know. digress from that. but. Uh, <laughs> You know, so there's still going to be re no worries if the power goes out, somebody will get a hold of and we'll make sure of it. Or if there's an emergency, they can stop what they're doing, we'll figure it out, and we can move forward. So we, that is the one thing, you know, when I said, when I brought up that we want to work on the customer service, make sure help in our public, this is one way, whether it doesn't seem like it necessarily, it is going to help the public in the end because we're trying to get caught up from 2018. And this is one way hopefully we could do this. I got, uh, I got a thought for, uh, for Ashley. You know, Ashley, uh, this is something that you uh, think is uh, necessary. Like the post office, we know what when we can go up there and then they're closed at a certain time. I don't think it should be just randomly, you know, on this day and that No, day. I agree. I think if you did it like the post office does, we know, like, it is, what is it, from 1 to 2 or something? It doesn't right. open until 2 or 3. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think if you're going to do something like this, make it the same time. Right. That's what, and that's what I, I was just saying. It doesn't have to be yeah. Fridays. But right. yes, I agree. It needs to be one set time. And yeah. I apologize if I was not clear about no, that. Right. No, I definitely agree. It needs to be one set day. You And it has to stay that way, way so people know. No, I was not meaning that I would jump. No, that's not what I meant. So I'm really sorry if that's how that oh, came right. off. I was just saying it doesn't have to be Fridays. It can be whatever day of the week that the commissioner would like it. We just we just need some help. I didn't get this job handed to me on a silver platter. It's there's a lot of stuff going on and we're drowning basically and we can't get Sarah trained in because I am constantly getting new stuff. I'm constantly on the phone emailing, doing this, doing that. 
it's nonstop and the same for Julie. And we have tried to set up training time and then things happen. Emergencies come up or Jim needs something or Paul comes in or there's, or even just a citizen. And I do think the customer service has gotten drastically better um, since I got in there. I am there a lot. I do coach volleyball, but like I said, I go in earlier and I'm still there every single day. So it's just, we just need some, some help right now to get caught up on some stuff because right now the state auditors are even having troubles figuring out what in the world the last one did. So how am I supposed to? You know what I mean? So we need some time so where I can sit down and that's why I come in early a lot is because we need time where we can just sit and just focus and not get interrupted with any outside things. So again, I apologize if I, if I sounded like I was all over the board, I should have been more specific. Just pick one set date and that'll be, that'll be it for whenever Levi or the commission decides to pull it. Well, I didn't mean to single it off. So I, I just was saying that we need to make it more customer friendly so we know exactly when it is and uh, go by that. Right. And, uh, no, I understand what training is all about. It costs money to train. Right, yeah, I'm sorry if I I did not mean for the hours to sound like they'd be all of them, so that was well, my fault. You explained it, that's great. Uh, and taking off Friday afternoon when it first came out, I thought just what you said. You know, I want to get to the lakes early this weekend. Well, <laughs> I don't go to the lakes anymore. Out there. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, no, uh, and that's why I said it doesn't matter which day, but I guess I should have been more clear. I want it the same day every single week. It should be the same day every single week. So. My only regret in all this is that you weren't here two years sooner. <laughs> Thank Re you. Respectfully, though, how is this going to help you? Because you're still in the office the same hours. Not really, though, because I stay after. No, but what I'm saying is, you're, wouldn't you be better off, like they were saying, that you might want to shut down an afternoon one day or something? Well, and we and can. Not, you know, because you, cause, cause you've made the comment, you know, that it wasn't necessarily for overtime. But the way you're doing it, it would be for overtime because you're still open the same hours. You're still going to have the same interruptions. What you need is time to either, either, either Sarah says, uh, or, or Julie answers the phone, and she says, Ashley and Sarah are busy in training right now. You'll have to call back or whatever it might be respectfully so that you can dedicate time to training. Because if you don't dedicate time to training and, and teaching Sarah, you know, yes, it does take time away from Julie because now she has to answer the phone. But just change, just having these hours the same way all the time, that isn't going to really... Well, that's not what we're saying, Paul. What we're saying is, so what I was envisioning, whether it's once a month or twice a month, so, you know, if we said it was the, the first and third Wednesday of the month, on the first and third Wednesday at 1 o'clock, the office would be closed for all, for all traffic outside traffic. The office would still be open where all three of them would be in there working, but that's de their dedicated training is that time. For all three of them to sit down and do the training that needs to get done. But that's different. So it's kind, of two, it's kind of two different options. Right, right. The and one that, that I gave and then the one that Levi came into my office afterwards and had said we could do this too. Right. And I, it doesn't matter to me either way well, we want to do it. Well, I just think that option is going to give you a better chance to get things done because this isn't going to really change anything unless you work overtime well, on Friday or Wednesday or whatever. Whereas if you actually shut down. Well, and I don't get paid overtime. But um, another thing Levi and I talked about, like with having that Friday afternoon still like we do during the summer, you, that also gives for like flex time. So say Sarah wants, we want to do training and use that Friday afternoon for training. So then Sarah maybe would not come in, uh, I'm just using her as an example, would not come in one day in the morning for a couple hours. She'd come in late to make up, you know what I mean? So it's shifting those hours. As long as the, the, the thing that I told her was that as long as there's somebody in the office at all times when we say we're going to be open to answer the phone, that was the main goal. Right. It doesn't matter if you know if, if they need to shift around to make sure that they're it's covered. whether it's lunch or whatever. Not everybody takes off at the same time of lunch, or not everybody comes in at you know 
not everybody has to come in at seven if that's the hours we're going to keep or whatever at the time we're going to start. Well, what's wrong with taking a half a day? And that's what we're thinking, right? A certain day every week, a half a day, and that's the day that everybody knows that it's it's not open, and then they use it for that. A ho- and then when, when they get caught up with all this garbage that happened before, then we and and they and I think Ashley should give you the commissioners a report what they got accomplished in that. And I think that would be more sense. And everybody will adapt to it. And we could still keep the summer and winter hours. Yeah. We wouldn't have to, we wouldn't have to go to just you summer, still summer keep, hours you're here. You'll be able to keep your half a day. And, and I think, like I said, report to the commissioners what you've accomplished, you know, how, how well it's going. Because I'm sure it'll go well under your leadership. And it's just that uh, you were left, yeah. A hell of a mess. So we all know it. So does would Wednesdays work good for you, or Tuesdays? Wednesdays? It doesn't matter. I just thought um, Wednesdays are kind of a. Wednesdays I have HBA once a month. Tuesdays are Kiwanis every week, but I don't go every week. Well, I, what I was saying Wednesdays is so we say Wednesdays at one, which you should be done with that. Right. So Wednesdays at one, the office would close. And we trial that, you could say we trial that until uh, the first of the year and let us know how it's going at that point. But, but then put an ad in the paper, not just right. a little one, put it so people, a couple, three weeks, so people know it. Right, and we will. And we want to hold off, we won't start it necessarily next week, but we can start it the next week after that, that way it gets published. Every Wednesday? Every Wednesday. Probably in lieu of the paper, and I better not say this too loud, but uh, maybe when you send out the uh, monthly bill, just have a letter in there saying, so everybody gets a damn bill and then notify this is what's happening. And well, we'd set it out on social media and all that other stuff, but if and that's what you want to do. As well as the paper. If that is what we should do, then I entertain for motion. So are we going to, are we going to keep the summer and winter hours or are we just going to go to summer hours here? We'd keep I the, think we should keep the summer. Summer hours it gives you it gives you an extra hour in the afternoon to work because because right now if you keep your summer hours you'd be done if you if you start, if you close at one you only have two and a half hours to get your stuff done. Do a lot of people come in through the door on a normal typical Friday open you know normal mm-hmm. hours? It's not it's hit and miss. It's like so. any business. And if it's the middle of winter and it's freezing cold out, then no, we don't get a lot of people. <laughs> so Wednesdays go from 1 to 4.30 would be closed for office hours. Yeah. Right, okay. So what's the summer hours? When does the summer hours start? It's Monday still day. Memorial through Labor Day. And what is the summer hours? Monday through Thursday, 7 to 4.30 with a half hour lunch. And Fridays, 8 to noon. And what's the winter hours? Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 4.30 with an hour lunch break. So we couldn't just keep it that way and still have your after one afternoon off? You want, you're saying you want to go... Summer hours year round, or summer and winter hours. Summer and winter hours. I think keep, you keep could, the way it is. I think you could still keep that time off on that Wednesday, no matter what hours we have. Correct. That's what I'm. That's yes. what I'm trying to say. Yes, that's because the hours don't change except in the morning. You're only doing it to get the stuff cleaned up. Yep. Yeah. So if, does that sound okay? That we'll keep the winter and summer hours. And close on Wednesdays from one until four thirty. If so, has need a motion that we do I'll that. Make a motion until the first meeting. Mike, please. Second. Dave, second. Is there any other discussion? Dave. Yes. Nicole. Yes. Mike. Yes. Paul. Yes. And a yes for me. Uh, it didn't get put on the agenda, or it didn't put on the agenda, but was in the packet. 
Um, it's the demo property, Graham. And it's not that we need to make a decision on it tonight. I just want to know, is there support for it? Um, Paul brought it up to HEDC at the last meeting and it did go over that they were in support of that. This is a very draft version that I had sent out. Um, but the gist of it would be that we'd work together to help get some of those properties that are in disarray or would need a lot of money to get it rehabbed. So the, the grant, it's a grant slash loan. Um, some of the criteria would be, you know, if the value of the property and the structure is less than 50,000 would be one of the key things. It hasn't been inhabited for the last few years. Um, or if it's going to cost more than 50 cents, 50% 50 of the assessed value to get it replaced. Um, the basis of this is I just want to know if you guys are in support of this. If so, should we put some money towards it in the budget? Because we can use sales tax dollars out of it. I have a look at it. Do you have a copy of it? Okay. Do you have a copy of it? I gave it to him. Okay. I sent it. Oh. We're giving a thousand. No, thousand now. And how it would work is that so this is for residential and, and businesses. It wouldn't be anything in particular. Um, we'll just use the chicken scratch as an example. Not that I'm saying that this is what will happen. But so if somebody bought, it'd have to be the property owner that would do it. If they were going to tear it down, they could get whatever we set. But in this one, I say up to four thousand dollars. Once the property is down and out, we would re reimburse them. Once they hand us the, the bill saying that it is down and completed, we grant them four thousand dollars. If it costs them more than four thousand dollars and they're not going to build anything on it, we could work through HEDC because it would have to be the HEDC side, which I talked to Gary about it today, would be loaned out to a maximum of say 14,000 to help offset for them to get it tore down, get it taken care of. A low interest loan say at two percent or so and they pay it off over 24 months. It's really a more aggressive way to look at getting rid of dilapidated properties or properties that aren't lived in. Right, uh, right now we only do two thousand dollars. It's just more of an aggressive way to do it. It's in the very infant stages of trying to figure out how to word it. So what you see in that form might not in another next meeting might not even resemble it because the HEDC has to go through that too. But it's a cooperative between the two. So the right. city isn't stuck with all of it, nor is HEDC. And also from the standpoint that we can put a little more money because we have two entities going into it. Uh, right now, I think he's looking at me in a residential. We're talking about at some point doing something on the commercial side, too. So right. any input is greatly appreciated if you look at it. And, and I can get your copy or actually get your copy of what it is now if, you're, if you guys are interested in, in giving some advice, you know, towards the place. You know, it's, it's very infant, very... But the biggest thing is I want to know, is this something we should stick more time and effort into? The other thing that we had said was, you know, if they tear this building down and they now put a brand new house up, do we give them another, say, 10000 or whatever as a way to help incentivize for a new home being built on that property that's been tore down? But we already give them incentives for, yeah, we for $75,000. We do, but there again, is this another way to help incentivize to... So how much can we give? I don't know. That's... Well, you know, that's conversation. <laughs> this is what Paul said, and we uh, and I'm a, a member of uh, HEDC too. It's in the infant stages. Nothing's etched in stone. But I think, and I don't speak for the HEDC, uh, but Paul, I think, can verify this. It did receive a very warm uh, 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 reading from Paul with this uh, uh, graph, rough graph. Don't you think, Paul? Yes, uh, there was, everybody was in support of it from the AGDC side, and, and of course, JR can testify to that too. It is something, but it's it's really, 
it's really in the like I said, it's in the infant stages. It's, we got we got to work out the bugs. You know, if you read through that, it talks about a lot of different things that we just have to find out. Okay, is the city on board? Is ATDC on board? And I think that's what Levi is trying to get at right now. Do we, as city commissioners, do we feel this is something that, just like I said at ATDC, if they're not interested in putting their time involved, time into it, the city is the same way here. The city isn't going to be interested in doing it. HEDC might not be interested in doing it either. So we're kind of looking at it. If we can get both entities to work together, maybe we can get a good final product. But if, but if, just, if you guys aren't interested in it, there's no sense pursuing it any further from both entities. So. Well, I'm interested in it, but I think there's some bugs that need to be worked on. Oh, yeah, that's definitely. Like I said, that's why it's in the infant stages. You know, with, with that help, too, though, HEDC working with them, Dave, you could take a the residents just should be tore down and you help them get it tore down and you give them so much time uh, again this is a, a rough draft you give them so much time and if they build it's all it's like it becomes a grant well then you get a, a home on a tax roll an electrical it's going to benefit the city and it's just kind of a, the long-term effect will be uh, very beneficial to the city well, and I don't disagree with you. Rick. I just, I just think I, I'm not against helping them with the teardown, but when they're going to rebuild, and we've already given them incentives, you know, so it's right. dollars and cents. So the reason I looked at it currently, what I know of, there's five properties in town that are under fifty thousand and don't have have a resident in it, and there's about. 20 properties that are valued under 50,000 total. And this isn't unique to Hillsboro. There's a lot of communities that do this. There's samples right here that, that were pulled up. You know, there's towns, and they're not all big towns, this town right here, Wells is only 2,300 people. You know, so it's not a big city thing either. There's small cities that, that do it also. So. And it could be other things that we do, but so as the general consensus that this is something that the commission would like us to keep moving forward with HEDC on? Absolutely. Okay. okay. So please read over it, send any notes to Paul and I, um, any changes, anything like that. Um, the last item, I know I brought it up a little bit, do we want to look at the calendar magnets or something similar to send out to the residents? for the beginning of the year that would have the recycling on it and all the contact information on it, hours, those type of things. I think we could get them for less than two bucks each. I think it's a good idea. After hours call for city crew or you name whatever it is. Otherwise, we wind up calling the insurance department to find out who's around. And they don't always have the right number. They call Jim, I think, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make a motion to move on the magnets. Okay. Second. All second. All seconds. Any other discussion? I'd like to see who's going to draft that up. Or what all is going to be included on that? So. They'll be drafted okay. before we send it up. Make sure you put Levi's number on top. <laughs> <laughs> Paul first. Go for it. I was, th I was thinking maybe Chuck or Rick, concerned citizens. <laughs> well, Make sure. They probably won't get a good answer. Make sure, no, no. Make sure my number's not on there. <laughs> Mine either. <laughs> Whichever number it is, we can always forward it on to Paul. <laughs> there you go. They can't get a hold of Jim and put my number down. <laughs> okay. I'll tell them where to go. <laughs> Mike? Yes. Paul? Yes. Dave? Yes. Nicole? Yes. And he asked for me. All right. Good idea. Any other things for the good of the order? Citizens addressing the commission. Yes. Anything else? I got saved by this time. Got saved by You guys just put it over and I'm ready. So appreciate listening. We let you talk during the meeting, so you guys got it all out then. And thanks Nothing. for the input, John. Thank you. Thanks. Anything else? Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion is adjourned.